For many people, when they approach the subject of abundance and the subject of wealth or the subject of well-being generally, they think that the way the world approaches this subject is the way the saints should approach the subject. That is an error already. The believer is governed by a set of beliefs. There is an understanding that if you do not have, you are not a true believer. Are we together? There is a difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth and abundance. That word kingdom makes all the difference. I have taught you here and it bears repeating that you must understand the purpose of the blessings of the Lord. In the kingdom you are already at a risk if you try to journey on the path to wealth and abundance without knowing why. The first thing you receive as a believer is an orientation as to why God prepared an economic system for you. The difference between carnality and a mundane pursuit that ends you up in the flesh or that which empowers you to be an effective witness is this orientation. I have taught you that there are three essential reasons why God blesses the saints, why he opens us up to abundance, sufficiency, and wealth. Can I repeat it for your learning? Number one, to live a comfortable life. Write that down and never forget it. God is not against your living comfortably. Know this. God wants you and I to live a comfortable life whilst we serve him. It is the reason why sacrifice means a lot to him. Because you were not designed to live that way. God wants you to live a comfortable life. Number two, the second assignment behind your accessing the supplies of heaven. In all its ramifications, whether finances or otherwise. The second reason is so that you can advance the cause of the kingdom. My God, please write that. Star it if you are writing and don't forget that. A bigger reason, a bigger motivation as to why you must manifest the blessings, why you must access finances, resources and abundance in the kingdom is so that you can make resources available for this kingdom come project. I will repeat it again for your hearing that the name of the Lord Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Anybody who is incapacitated will not be able to do much for the kingdom in this end time. I tell you this from the integrity of scripture. If you are incapacitated financially, you will not be able to do much. Not for the kingdom, not for yourself, not for your family. Poverty and lack and want robs men of dignity. It reduces men to look like lower animals. Hallelujah. Advancement of the kingdom is the second reason why we are blessed in this kingdom. The third and final reason why God grants us access to resources and why he is bringing us into this prophetic season of abundance is to be able to be a blessing to the world in a practical and a definite way. Write that down please. God wants you to be a blessing to all and sundry. According to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God wants you to be a blessing to people beyond the walls of religion, beyond the walls of Christianity. That society is able to experience the impact of the love of Jesus through your life and that principally through your giving. Show me a believer who loves Jesus, who loves society and has the means, the economic means. I show you one who will be a blessing to all. Not just to Christians, not just to believers. There are many of you who already have compassionate hearts. But your limitations as far as communicating love and benevolence is lack of resources. And Satan wants it so. Because he knows you will never be able to help anyone with an empty hand. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The motivation behind your desire for wealth and abundance, 
must be purified by this revelation. Must be purified by this revelation. There are many believers who like money. They love it to a point of obsession. They are carnally minded, driven by money. Usually, they like preachers talking about subjects like this. Not necessarily because they love God. Not necessarily because they love His program. They just love the idea of being rich. They love the idea of being of means. They love the idea of being better than someone. That is not the kingdom's approach to the subject of abundance. God's goal is not for you to have more money than brother A or sister B and then flaunt it, marketing the flesh. No, that's not God's goal. God's goal is not just for you to celebrate that you have become, you have arrived, or as we call it in our vernacular here, you are blown. All that subject is complete nonsense from a kingdom standpoint. There is a greater and nobler approach. And this is what I'm teaching you. I tell you that there are many believers who will never access the supplies of heaven. The reason is not that they are not hardworking. The reason is not that they are not productive. There is a corruption in their heart. You have been weighed by God and you have been found to be better off without those resources. God has seen that if these resources step into your hand, you will be a danger to yourself. You will be a danger to your family, a danger to the body of Christ. It's like giving a small child a grenade. And that child can detonate it plain and blow up himself, blow up everyone there. So God educates you. And in order of priority, before he shows you his ways, he has to culture your understanding. The reason why I grant you access to financial resources, influence, any kind of supply, is number one for your comfort number two so that you will provide resources for kingdom advance number three so that you can extend and reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way are we learning church is now quiet you rejoice when you heard that it was a season of abundance but now as the demands are being unveiled, believers always run away from demands. Because to many believers, they believe all it takes is just a prophetic word. If I say, open your hands and stretch it towards me now. In a hurry. You will even wake your baby and stretch his own tiny hands too. So that the baby receives his portion. And that is good. I hope I'm able to do that at the end of the service. But before then, before then, this stronghold in the mind that is stopping you from stepping into prophecy. I don't know what ministry has struggled financially. I don't know what family is struggling financially. But in the name of Jesus Christ, by this unction that has landed through this prophecy, you come out of shame and reproach. You come out of shame and reproach in the name of Jesus. Listen. Let me honestly confess to you, in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of honesty, reject poverty. Reject lack. Reject want. Are we together? Reject it. It will rob you of living a life of dignity. There are some of you now who are sick. No machine can diagnose what is wrong with you. Because what is wrong with you is not from your body. It is the pressure of rent, the pressure of a court case. You are not able to pay this, whatever it is. I've seen people depressed as a result of this economic thing. And do you know, it is a strategy. Every time I've taught you here, when Satan sees that your concentration towards spiritual things is heightening, increasing, what he does is he does something to your finances so that you, you leave your passion for God and you have to turn to face the matter of making ends meet. One of the most destruct, destructive strategies of Satan is to make your finances deplete indefinitely. You will lose concentration. You will not be able to pray again, not be able to fast again. As a man of God, God is telling you to teach on the Holy Spirit, hold a crusade, and you check your balance, and your balance is nothing encouraging. You will most likely disobey that instruction. Are we together? 
Remember, I have a covenant under God to you that you will not, among the many things that you are to become, is your spiritual vibrancy in order of priority, but that you will become a people who are financially robust. And I say this without any sense of apology. The word of God will make it happen. You will keep watch yourself, watching yourself as you evolve, as you become. You are hearing the truth. There's no restraint when your heart is right. There's no restraint when the requisite knowledge is upon you. There's no restraint when the grace that makes it happen comes upon you. You are not the first to step into this inheritance. Many have come, many have gone. Do you believe this? When he talks about the season of abundance, the first thing that needs to be corrected is purpose. Purpose. Why is God opening the floodgates of heaven? Why is God bringing Koinonia? Why is God bringing Joshua Selman? Why is God bringing you to a season of abundance? Just because he likes the idea of money? No. Just because he wants you to get a mansion and flaunt it around? No. Believers... You must subscribe to a renewed orientation for God's sake. Know why God prospers people. Reject carnality. It becomes, you become an enemy to yourself. The moment your obsession for money becomes greater than your obsession for God and the things of God, you are not in God's program again. There are people who have been tested by God. 1 million, 10 million, 50 million stepped into their hands and it was a test. Just to watch them. And God saw that their hearts were no longer with Him. Why should I pray when there is 50 million in my account? Why should I fast when I already have two houses? An estate is on His way. So when they say lift your hands to receive, you just smile and pity those who are coming. And God says, I've seen your heart. You will not go far. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. There are many people who are called by God to be champions. Are we together? Merchants of the gospel. Champions, custodians of the wealth of the kingdom. And because their hearts became corrupted by the naira and kobo, the tea and bread... Unfortunately, this includes preachers. Unfortunately, this includes businessmen. And I hope not you. For many people, because of the corruption of their heart. You know, generally, once you are rich, people love you. Once you are rich, you become a king, even without a crown. And so we, we love, we look forward to being celebrated. Because some of us came from wounded childhoods. No one loved you. You never had an applause. You never took first position in class. Never had an opportunity to receive an applause. And so we press, we hustle as we use that term. Very destructive term in fact. Don't use that term as a believer. No, we are called to walk circumspect. As wise and not as unwise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And the way we redeem the time is by knowing on time what the will of God is. Is someone learning? So many believers like the idea of money. They press they travel from pillar to post. There are people who the only thing that gets their attention is to talk about money. Money, 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 money. Once you are not talking about money, it doesn't matter whether you talk about Jesus, the cross, rapture, souls, that's none of their business. Quite honestly. All they are concerned about is money. And you know what? The entire pursuit for money is simply that they want to use it as a ladder to have a sense of worship. That you have arrived is too small a reason. God's first assignment in stepping into this prophecy is to purify your heart, to purify your motive. Someone shall purify my heart. You wouldn't believe that this should be discussed in something that has to do with money. Say it again purify my heart. I prayed and I cried to God and I said, Any money that you will bring to my life and to this ministry. That will make me forget about you, grow in pride, look down on men, 
and leave you. May it never come to me. May that demonic kind of money never come to me. Some of you are afraid of saying amen. If you can't say amen, say I repent. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you. Hallelujah. We have some Christians today who neglect the fact that money can bless. They live in poverty, they don't excel, they are just um, conscious of heaven. They want to make um, eternity. And we also have another set of Christians who believe that money can bless and they pursue money. They forget every other thing as far as they make money, their spiritual life dies off. They pursue money with all their strength. The two Christians are very wrong. Christianity shouldn't make you rich and forget God. And Christianity should not make you poor and be wretched in this life. If you are a Christian, do well to balance these two things. According to Apostle Joshua Selman, the name of Jesus is too heavy. You need money to post crusade. You need money to do so many things. So as you are pursuing God, as you are pursuing spirituality, also make sure that you are very rich on this earth. Thank you for always visiting Words of Wisdom. For more videos like this, do not forget to subscribe and also share this video with all your friends. See you in our next video. God bless you.